Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here and today maybe with the final topic of the discrete time Fourier transform and that is the application of discrete time Fourier transform to systems described by linear constant coefficient difference equations and you know in short they are known as LCCDE right and how are they so we represent an LTI system if you have a uh, the LTI system input is x of n and the output is y of n so let's say the input output relation is given by an nth order equation and that is the linear constant coefficient differential equation and how is that it is like this a summation k running from 0 to n a k y of n minus k and this is equal to summation k running in round 0 to let's say new variable m b k x of n minus k x is the input y is the output k is the difference term a k b k are the weights or the constants now if you are given this sort of a system and we are asked the frequency response of it we are asked the frequency response of it so how do we calculate it how do we calculate it uh, and the frequency response is what so it's uh, uh, the, the this one the h of e of j omega if this is unknown so how do you calculate it right so we know the frequency response is the Fourier uh, pair Fourier pair of the impulse response right and we know this is an LTI system so we can do what we can say let's say for example a method number one is that if I consider for simplicity my input is a complex exponential signal so this would imply that my output would be equal to the frequency response times the signal again so you put these values in this equation that is let's say equation number one and you solve them for for what you need put these in 1 and solve for h of e of j omega and this is something that is a little time consuming a little tiring and a little tough to do at least I cannot do it because of the mathematical complexity I have the Fourier tool so I use the Fourier tool this is method number two what do I do what do I do I take the discrete time Fourier transform of the given LCCDE and what would happen then which means the Fourier transform on the left hand side would be like this And similarly the Fourier transform on this side as well now uh, the AK is uh, you know a constant so we could take it outside of the Fourier transform and of course the summation as well so this would imply that you have a summation k running from 0 to n a k and the Fourier transform you have of y of n minus k similarly you have at this side you would take the summation k running from 0 to m outside b k outside and you would have the Fourier transform of the remaining x of n minus k yes now now what do you have the Fourier transform of y of n minus k the time shifting property says what you have y of e of j omega and this is this has to be multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega so I write it to the left side that you have your exponential of negative j omega to the power k right 
to the power k and your original y of e of j omega. Fine. Similarly over here also. k running from 0 to m. bk, what would you have? You would have your exponential of negative j omega to the power k again. And you would have an x of e of j omega over here. And this is what I have used the time shifting property and is that fine till here now what can I do I can take this uh, I can separate this y and x right I can so what do I do I take this y of e of j omega like this and then I have this thing remaining k running from 0 to n a k exponential of negative j omega k we have this with respect to summation fine then you have over here x of e of j omega you have a summation k running from 0 to m you have a b k exponential of negative j omega k do you not know y by x would be what? y by x would be the frequency response. Yes. y by x would be the frequency response. So this implies and I would write it over there somewhere that my h of e of j omega which is the frequency response so this would be equal to the Fourier transform of the output divided by the Fourier transform of the input and by this relation this is equal to summation k running from 0 to m b k exponential of negative j omega k and this is divided by summation k running from 0 to n a k exponential of negative j omega k that is what we have and this is from the convolution property and you know this very well convolution property what does the convolution property say that 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 what that the, my y of e of j omega is equal to x of e of j omega times the h of e of j omega this is what I wanted to prove and I have got it this is how you find the frequency response by just looking at the equation B0 would be the term you don't have any difference. B1 would be the term you have the first difference. B2 would be the term you have the second difference. Similarly over here A0 would be a term with no difference at the output side. A1 first difference. A2 second difference. We do this through an example. We do this through an example. And for which let's say I remove the board first. Okay, now I did not want to, to rub this, but uh, let's say I write it again. You have a y of n minus k, you have an a k, you have a summation from k running from 0 to n. Isn't it like this? It is. This is an any nth order linear constant coefficient difference equation. Example. Example is y of n minus a times y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n and what is unknown the frequency response h of g omega and the corresponding impulse response h of n is unknown h of e of j omega how do you calculate it? have a look is a first order system y of n minus 1 means what this a represent a 1 right so summation if you start from a is from from first the numerator so you have a b 0 for k equal to 0 b 0 means the term of x with no difference so you have the term of x with no difference is this one so the the coefficient b k is 1 right so you have a 1 and this is multiplied with an exponential of negative j minus 0 would be 1 right then you come down here a0 is the term of the output with no difference so this so the this is 1 
right multiplied with a zero we have one right e to the power zero is a one then you have a plus you have a plus k equal to one so this means a one a one is the term of the output with the term with the first difference and this is it so the co the coefficient is a negative a so you have a negative a and this is multiplied with an exponential of negative j omega k so, so k is one you have a negative j omega so this is the the answer to this now if you need to get the corresponding uh, impulse response so you know this very well this is a simple function and this would be a to the power n u of n yes and that's the answer that's the answer it's a basic discrete uh, this is a <laughs> this is a very basic uh, you know uh, thing a to the power n u of n has a discrete time this one minus a one minus a e of why am i in a hurry why am i in a hurry i'm sorry okay i'm sorry one minus a e of negative j omega right this is the basic discrete of Fourier transform pair so once again i suggest you to study the basic Fourier transform pairs given in the book they are as useful as you saw over here just a second fine let's say one more example y of a the example is what the second example y of n minus 3 by 4 y of n minus 1 uh, plus 1 over 8 y of n minus 2 is equal to 2 times x of n again the frequency response h of g omega and impulse response h of n is unknown so the frequency response i told you you can just write simply by looking at the equation so the numerator is with the x sides k running k is equal to zero means no difference with x so this is the term zero and b zero is two the constant the coefficient okay two divided by a zero no no difference with the y term so no difference with the y term is this the coefficient is one multiplied with e power zero is one right then you have a plus a one is the term with first difference this one three by four but this is a negative so you have a negative three by four and this is multiplied with a negative j omega for k equal to one similarly for k equal to two you have plus one upon eight this one the term exponential of negative j omega two and this is what the frequency response is now the corresponding Fourier transform i cannot tell directly right the corresponding impulse response i cannot tell directly so what do i do i would have to simplify this to some sort of a basic signal and we do this through the method of partial fraction yes we do this by partial fraction we do what we yes we do what we do this by partial fraction so first of all have a look 2 divided by 1 minus 3 by 4 e power minus j omega plus 1 by 8 e power minus j omega 2 this is the second order uh, uh, linear equation i can write it as a product of two first order linear equations so you know it how to do it i have already written it over here for myself one minus one over two e power minus j omega into one minus one over four right one minus one over four e power minus j omega this is how you do it fine now you now this is the equation this is the equation you equate it to a upon 1 minus 1 upon 2 e of minus j omega plus b upon 1 minus 1 over 4 e of minus j omega now i'm very weak in mathematics but i will give it a try okay now you multiply it with the lcm you multiply it with the lcm you get a 2 is equal to a times 1 minus 1 over 4 e of minus j omega plus b into 1 minus 1 over 2 e of minus j omega now to make one zero take the other to take the other zero make one <laughs> what did i say i do not know 
I hope you're getting it, right? I hope you're getting it. These are simpler topics. Anyway, let's say I want to find A, I have to make this, this term B0. So how do I make it 0? By putting E of negative J omega is equal to 2. Right? So this 2 would cancel out with this 2. You have a 1 minus 1 would be a 0 and B would be 0. So you would be left with this thing. So what would this be? 2 is equal to A times 1 minus 1 upon 4 into 2 plus B times 1 minus 1 upon 2 into 2. This term would get 0. This term would get a 1 upon 2. Yes, 1 upon 2, 1 minus 1 upon 2 is 1 upon 2. So A would come out to be 4. A would come out to be 4, right? Now to find B, you have to make the things with with B equal to 0, with A equal to 0. So you have to put exponential of negative J omega is equal to 4 in this case. So when you put it 4, what would happen? You would have 2 is equal to A times 1 minus 1 upon 4 into 4 plus B times 1 minus 1 upon 2 into 4. So this 4 would cancel out with this 4 and you would have 1 minus 1 equal to 0. So this thing would cancel out to be 0. Now you would have a 4 upon 2. So you have 2, 1 minus 2, negative 1. So B would be equal to a negative 2. B would be equal to a negative 2. B is equal to a negative 2. Isn't it like this? It is. So what can I do? I can put this in this equation. This was basically my what? My frequency response, h of e of j omega, right? So I would write h of e of j omega is equal to a is a is a 4 into 1 minus 1 upon 2 exponential of negative j omega minus 2 1 minus 1 upon 4 exponential of minus j omega. Right? Have a look. Do I have the basic transform pair? I have 1 upon 1 minus a e of minus j omega. So I have e minus j omega, I have 1. So this 1 upon 2 could be my a, this 1 upon 4 could be my a. So if I multiply these with a 1, right? So I take this 4 outside. So this implies that my corresponding y of n, my corresponding h of n. So now I have done what? I have simplified this particular thing into this sort of a thing to get me what? These are basically the same thing, uh, the equal thing. This is equal to this thing, but I have uh, I have written it from this form to this form so that I can get this basic formula applied onto it. And now I can apply it. So have a look, this 4 I take outside. And then you have a to the power n. So this a is my 1 over 2 now. So 1 upon 2 to the power n, u of n, right? And then you take this minus 2 outside and then you have a, 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 a to the power n, a is 1 upon 4 now to the power n and you have u of n. And that is what the answer to this question is. That is what the answer to this question is. So anyway, that is it for me for this video. The book has one example. You can do it yourself. Mathematics is involved and I don't like it. So that's it for me for this video maybe i see you in the next video with some examples on it or if i don't think it's fine it's i don't find it's necessary so we would start the next topic that is the laplace transform so anyways that's it for this video see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers and of course do subscribe to the channel as well do like comment and share the videos goodbye